I've had someone ask about my grey water system so I've managed to get the baby down for a sleep and I'm going to show you. G'day there, I'm Dana from Piwakaka Valley Homestead. Today I'm going to give you a tour of our grey water system that we have uh, coming out of the washing machine and going through into our tunnel house. Well here we are in my very messy laundry. I'm not going to show you most of it because it's a shambles. Um, it is also our best food storage area so we have quite a lot of stuff there. I've got some jerseys waiting to be washed. Um, but this is where my washing machine hooks up. This is the outflow of the washing machine and we've got it hooked into this pipe here. And this pipe runs along and it actually goes through the back of that cupboard and pops out the other side of the wall. And here you can see where the uh, pipe comes back out. It's just ever so slightly lower at this end than it is at the other end. Um, and I've made sure that it sits well above the uh, top of the water here. Just for any reason if the water gets too full we don't want it back flowing back in there and flooding out the laundry. Now the one thing I do need to fix with this whole setup is something to cover the top. I have tried all sorts of things. We did have a barrel that was closed over the top but um, we swapped it out for this one so we could access the pump a bit easier that we've since put in here. Um, and we need some way of keeping the flies, uh, particularly the sand flies that we have and the mosquitoes out. Uh, but this has not worked. Basically what happens here is the water comes in and it's sitting too long on top of the on top of the fabric and it's pushing it down so I need some way of attaching the fabric. Um, we've also tried there's some there you can see some leftover weed uh, not weed matting that's this one um, like bug netting that we've tried it with as well and that didn't work either um, but we want something to cover it to keep the flies from going in there because the mosquitoes and the sand flies seem to breed in the water and we've got enough of those here already without needing them to be breeding in here as well. So in this tank, I can't unhook the wire, it's all tangled up, we'll just tuck it around the back, tuck it around the back. And here, I mean it's kind of gross because it is uh, water out of a washing machine, so it has got the soap and stuff in it and because that mesh hasn't been on properly there's a couple of moths floating in there as well um we did have this set up as a passive system and had it flowing out this tap at the bottom uh but we were finding it was because up here is all on one level it was just flowing too slowly um so we've actually put in a pump and that's what this outflow is for um and we have got an inline filter here as well to help catch the goobies so when it was passive it just simply filled to the top and then it would slowly filter out um, through like a soaker hose that we had. Um, but we were finding that it was just taking too long to empty. So I've gone and got a really cheap pump. This is one that's set up to, um, I think it's a sump pump or something. Um, and it's got a float on it that turns itself off and on when the water gets to a certain level. Um, as you can see there, it does keep the water kind of higher than what I'd hoped um, but when the float goes up it turns on and when the float goes back down it turns off so hopefully that'll run long enough that I can go and show you what it looks like at the other end that pump was really cheap I think it was 70 or 80 New Zealand dollars it wasn't an expensive one um, and then we just have this cheap black hose that runs all the way along here. And I'll show you where it goes in the tunnel house. This is our first year with the dripper tape and um, I'm a little bit annoyed at how it's working. I expected the new washing machine to have a much better filter on it. Unfortunately it doesn't seem to have any kind of filter on it so I need to get something that's going to catch those little fibres because these drip tapes have only been down for a, a couple of weeks and um, they seem to be clogging up. Previously I have used just some poly hose with some holes drilled in it and that worked really well 
except by the end of the season I was finding that they too were clogging up and I was having to come and re-drill them and re-drill them um, so we'll see how this goes the, the reason I swapped from it being completely passively dripping through was that um, it did work with the soaker hose and just slowly dripping through the problem was that it just couldn't it wasn't doing it fast enough to keep up with the amount of washing that I was doing the busy household so the bucket was overflowing all the time um, so having the pump to force it through certainly working better um, I just need to work out some way of getting these fibers out um, rather than clogging up the drippers because that's really frustrating in here the water comes in through this main line first which is like a header line it goes all the way to the other end and runs across first and then off of it comes all of these drip lines which you can see the wee dripper holes there some of them are a bit clogged up unfortunately so it's not dripping so well down here and then at the end of each dripper line you put these little ends on um, which act like stoppers and you can unscrew them and it will release the end and let it dribble all the way out. And so it runs all the, the header line runs all the way to the end. And then once it's at the end it also runs across the back and out to the outside see here you can see where it goes to outside and I've got a tap on the other side of that wall to turn the off outside ones off and on and then all of these um, then just come off that top header line so you can see there's a T intersection um, and then a small length of poly and then it runs into the dripper hose um, and see same here we've just got the header line and a T intersection so wherever there's this poly hose is not dripping so it's good for crossing pathways and things and then when you do want it to start dripping that's when you attach it to the drip hose there's a broccoli that's grown over the winter i need to harvest that it's really hot in here so i'm going to get out of here and we'll go and show you where this hose comes out on the other side where i have the ability to turn it off and on to water my outside plants as well. The nice thing about having this all set up and automated is that I don't have to water my tomatoes or my peppers for the summer. Once they're established um, and they send their roots down deep, I know that with the amount of washing I do <laughs> that the plants out here are all getting watered. And it's a really good way of Oops, I'm stuck on a nail. A really good way of um, reusing the grey water that would otherwise just end up in our sewage system. Um, and it seems to go completely fine. The tomatoes seem to really cope with it really well. Um, the other nice thing is it makes it really easy for me to fertilise the tomatoes. All I do is um, tip some liquid fertilizer into that big blue barrel and it automatically drips it all out into the tunnel house for me which is really helpful. I'll just shut that gate and I'll show you uh, where I have the other garden set up. Um, so they they don't get the wind all the time. <laughs> they don't get the wind. I get the wind all the time. It is windy. The tap out here is off because it's springtime and we're still getting lots of rain but in the heat of the summer or as the pumpkins are ripening I can turn the tap on and make sure that the plants are getting plenty of water. So here's the wee tap. Move out of the sun so you can see it. There's the little tap and so that's currently off and so I can flick it on. Um, same thing just the poly hose out here. Um, which I have a header line that runs all the way down in front of all of those gardens and then each place that I need the drip tape to go we've just got a T intersection and then a little length of the poly hose and then attached to the drip hose um, and I've just used a few of these weed mat staples just to hold them down in place 
Um, so each of these beds, they're about three foot wide or about a meter wide. Um, each of those have got two strips of tape, which will be enough just to keep the soil damp. So in these garden beds, I've got potatoes and yams, uh, also known as ochre, uh, New Zealand yams. Um, this one is full of baby onions. And these ones have got corn and beans and squash. And the bottom one has a few tomatoes and some pumpkin plants. Um, and to be honest, they look like they could do with a wee drink of water, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure we've got some rain coming, so um, I'll leave them be. We've just put up a pergola, and the kids are swinging in their hammocks from it. I hope you found that video useful. If you have, hit the like button, consider subscribing to our channel. Um, and if you have any questions about anything that you've seen here today, please stick them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I'm not an expert on this by any means, but this is the system that we're using at the moment. I have used it for about the last three years in various different forms. This one is the new and improved version, so we'll see how we go. If you have any tips on how to either cover that barrel so that it doesn't keep falling in, or any ideas on how to keep the little fabric fibers out of the water, that would be really helpful too. Stick those down below as well. We'll see you in the next video.